the next thing we need to do is start putting it all together. So we go new composite shot, and this one's going to be called Terminator Vision. Not the nine, no. Terminator Vision. There we go. Uh, okay, that. Now we want to first of all add our footage on. So let's dump our footage onto the shot, which is exactly what we started with. There we go. And uh, we, we want to duplicate this uh, footage here. So I'm going to go duplicate. And on the top one, I want to first of all add the exposure uh, color correction. And I'm going to whack up the exposure uh, to about 1.2. I just want to blow out some of this footage because uh, I've based it on, uh, it won't look this bad anyway um, when we get around to it, but I've based it on the actual Terminator uh, look from the, the very first film, the Terminator. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of the footage is blown out with, with its uh, ready look, with its red look. Uh, the next uh, I'm going to add to is the hot spots. Uh, I've never used this one before, but it seems to work okay with this one. And we're going to change the threshold to about 0.59. And uh, that just brings some of these areas out a little bit better. Uh, finally, you want to change the opacity for this layer because you don't want to leave it like that because that looks pretty grim. Uh, so transform opacity and you want to lower it right down to about 25% like that. Now we want to add Next thing we'll do, add our grid overlay. So let's find that it's here somewhere. Virtual grid overlay. Stick that on the top. And uh, we want to create an ellipse mask to this. So let's go create the new mask. Uh, starting right in the corner. Drag all the way across to the bottom corner there. Doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you know, that's good. You want to change it to an invert mask. So click on the little red dot there. Boom, and it goes the other way around. Excellent. And we want to change a couple more of these mask controls. So we've got an inverted mask. We want to whack the expansion up to about 100 pixels. So it goes out a lot more. And the feather strength, we want to also whack right up to about 150. So it's nicely feathered on the edges like that. Now, next thing we want to do is add the glow effect to it. So glow, glow effect. And change the intensity to about two. And the radius all the way down. There we go. That's good. And finally, you want to change the opacity of this layer too. So opacity, and you want that to go down to about 20%. There we go, so it's just around the edges there. Now, you know, it's still not looking good. It's what's well, looking better, um, but we want to add the reddish to it now. So we need a new grade layer. So new layer, grade, not plain, grade layer this time. Okay, and we want to add the, uh, the effect we want is the hue colorize effect. So add that to it. Oh, there we go, starting to look a bit better. Um, the hue, I want this to be th about 355. Saturation, I want on a whack this right up to about 80. So it gives it real reddish there. And I want to increase the light, um, decrease the lightness down to about minus 26. There we go. It's looking better. See, I mean, you can change some of these settings, but if you look at it, it's more of a pinkish kind of color at the moment because that's the, the the look that it was in the actual Terminator film. Um, all this time, you know, not quite that pink, um, but it was a definite pinky color. And I, I went for 355 on there and that works great for me. So that was based on the main, on the actual movie. Now, so next thing we need to do, so is add our scan, our scanner. So let's find our scanner and dump that on the top. There we go, that's all our scan stuff now, which is starting to all come together. Um, 
if you're if when you did your grid some of the lines went out the side of it uh, you might want to just stick a mask on there subtract mask so you can tidy this up in in, in there at this point here uh, mine looks okay i'm quite happy with that so uh, i'm going to move on so first thing i want to do is add a glow effect glow flow glow flow glow there he is add a glow effect to the scanner and uh, intensity again to about two um, threshold to 50 and my radius to about five there we go so it's just given that a little bit of a bump there um, just to make that come alive a bit and finally i want to lower the opacity of this scan layer down to about 60 percent so let's lower that to about 60 so it just fades it out ever so slightly puts it into you know makes it a little bit better Right, next thing we need to do is start adding some targets um, for, for, for the Terminator. So, uh, add the, first of all, add the target footage, um, composite, composite shot. So, let's add that to the top there. There he is. There's our target. Yours probably looks a lot better than this one. Uh, this was just a very, very quick uh, bung together one. So, target. I want to go forward to about one second in. So about one second, there we go. And you want to add a, a position keyframe on that there. So position, keyframe that there. And you want to start scanning your targets about once every one and a half step, um, seconds. So you want to go forwards about you know, one and a half seconds from there. Well, that'll do. And move your target position. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to switch off some of the scanner stuff. Uh, just to speed things up a little bit, uh, so I don't need to visual overlay. And let's turn off some of. Let's turn off the grade as well. There we go. So we're just left with the with the footage. Um, so let's. Uh, we've got the position keyframe. There he is. And now we want to move this to our first target. So just uh, you know, change the uh, position of this. Move it wherever you want it to go. I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna gonna scan this truck, but you know, you scan whatever you like. So just touch it there. There we go. And then the second thing I'm gonna scan, so I'm gonna go forward to about four seconds, and I'm going to scan me. Now safe time, I'm gonna go straight to Dean. There we go. Straight to Dean. So this target's now gonna go from stationary nothing going to go all the way over scan the scan the van um, the truck and go over and scan dean and once it's found dean i'm going to fade it out so put a keyframe on the opacity and fade it out over i don't know about a second will be fine so drop that all the way down to zero so it's gone there we go which is perfect now we're going to start actually uh, doing some of the good stuff. So go forward to your position of your first target, which for me was the truck. There we go. Um, we can switch it off for a minute. I'm going to create a new plane. And I'm going to call this one a truck. And OK, create. And we're going to create a freehand mask. So first of all, uh, to be able to do this, I can't see anything at the moment, I'm going to bung the opacity all the way down to zero and uh, go zoom in a bit more on this truck. I'm going to draw around it with the freehand uh, mask tool. So just, I'm going to do this very, very roughly. I'm sure you can do a much better job than this when you're doing it, but I'm doing it just to be very, very quick. There we go, something like that. And uh, there we go, so that's our, that's our mask there. Um, I want to then duplicate this mask. Actually, before we do that, we're going we're gonna to move uh, the beginning of this footage, uh, of this layer, all the way to the playhead, which should match up with your first keyframe here for your uh, scan. And we're going to go forward three, key, three frames using the arrows. One, two, three. I'm going to bring the end all the way up. It's 
so it comes and disappears. You don't need to play with the opacity on this because it's literally a beep on and off. Um, so if you just bung the opacity back up again for a minute and go back to our first frame, there we go, and which is fine. And now we just animate it. So I'm going to go to a mask path and go go forward to the third keyframe to the third frame move our mask to match move over and it should tween if it, if it doesn't and it's a bit off you can just tweak it a little bit so there we go it follows now and then it should go off so it's literally on for one two three off and now we can duplicate that. So now right click, duplicate this mask, turn it to a subtract, subtract mask, and we want to change the expansion to minus four. So we get this nice little line going around the outside here, which is exactly what we want. Obviously, I'm sure you can do a better job at drawing around your object than I've done because that's pretty dire. Um, but there, that scans on and off very quickly. It's just a beep on off. Uh, and if you look at that with the grade layer and everything on, it will look pretty good. Uh, let's turn it all on. So you see it comes out pretty well and then goes straight off again. Now we want to add some text to that. So let's just turn the visual grid off. So create yourself a new let's make up that one. A new text layer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you want to position this around where the truck is. There we go. And stick some text in there. And this is gonna be truck metal, because it's made of metal. Um you want to give this a decent uh, font. You want to go for something that's quite computerized. I've got one on here, which is old school kind of uh, font there. You don't want to want to go with a true type font because it's not the, the kind of thing that would display on the Terminator's screen. Um, there we go. So that will work okay for me. Yeah, that's fine. Let's position it. This you want you want it to come on at the you know at the same time as the scan happens. Um, so move it, move the on on the position start head to the same place, and you want it to come on for about I don't know about a second I would say. So let's go forward to about a second. There we go, and uh, we can move that over there. There we go, and. Uh, just do a fade out there with the opacity. So opacity down to nothing. So now what happens is it comes in, it beeps on, and you get your little bit of text, and it fades out, um, which kind of works fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you want to do this, duplicate this for all of your different um, different scans. So you might have loads of things it's going to be scanning. Don't worry about the fact it's really bright at the moment because we're going to move it in a minute once we've finished positioning all of these. Um, so we've got the target, we've got the scanning stuff, um, and we're, we're all, you know all that's going to be moved in a minute. So it will all it will all blend in nicely. Okay, so right, I'm going to now move straight on and scan Dean. Uh, so let's go forward, so let's open the target, go forward to where Dean is scanned, which is here, and let's draw around him. There he is. Right, okay, so we're going to go new plane, and we'll call this one Dean, and okay, we're going to whack the opacity down. To zero. Uh, go for the freehand tool, draw around him. There he is. Right, so there we go, we've, we've drawn around. We do exactly the same as what we did before. So this is going to last for three frames. 
So grab the playhead, um, grab the, the start position and move it to the playhead. Go forward one, two, three. Move the end playhead to that position. So it just bongs off. So on, off. And we want to then animate the, the path. So we're going to go two, three, and then move it. And it goes off. So there we go. One, two, three, and off. Um, duplicate the mask. Turn it to a subtract mask. Change the expansion to minus four. And then we can put the opacity back up to 100%. There we go. Again, don't worry the fact it's bright as, as can be. I think I didn't put the opacity, yeah, I didn't put that one back up. So that one needs to go back up to 100% as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's banged right back up again. And they're all 100%. Yeah, that's all good. Um, you're now going to do the, t the same thing where with the text. So create a new text layer. New layer, text again. OK. And position it, I don't know, position it sort of above just to, above to the to the left of him there. And let's type in here. Uh, human being, Dean Nolan match, because that's who we're looking for. Not equal sign. Match, and then we're going to go initiating further scan, like so. Um, again, move the start head to the you know the beginning position there. So let's grab that, shove him, move him over to the start position. There we go, and the same at the end. And you want to go forwards about a second, like before. Great stuff. And you want to do a fade out on the text. So go transform opacity zero. There we go. So the you know it beeps, scans him, moves with him, and actually I don't want it to go over there, so we're just gonna move the text layer ever so slightly out there. So beep and then fades. Perfect. Now, because Dean is the subject that we actually want to, uh, we wanted to scan, we're going to do a little bit something different. So on all of your other scans, it's literally beeped on for three frames and then gone off. For this particular one, you want to extend it. So we're going to go and extend it. Let's whack it up a bit for now. Uh, we can adjust that in a minute. Now, going to go for your three frames um, that we've already keyframed here and then go forward about I don't know about a second and you want to move and create a further keyframe so for this though you're going to need to turn your scanner on okay so path and you're going to drag it down to your scanner don't worry about it. it's gone all white and weird can deal with that in a minute. There we go. So that's gone down to the scanner. Uh, we're going to just delete that second mask a minute because we'll recreate that in a minute. And then once we're there, we're going to transform this scan into a photo. So we're going to add a photo to this. Dean photo. There we go. There he is. Look at that. Dean the Viking. Okay, grab that and dump that on top of your or on top of here and we want to we want to draw around him first so just move him down to um, and position him around where the scanner is uh, it might be useful to just lower the opacity while you do this a little bit just so you can see through him and move it down uh, that'll do that'll do and uh, you you do want to draw around him because you don't want any of the background in this so we're going to go back to the freehand tool freehand and cut him out but you want to cut out to where the grid is 
So we'll start here and draw around him. Now we've drawn around him, which which works fine. That's a bit rubbish. Let's move that in a bit. Great. Okay, so let's just close that one there. Now go back to the the Dean scan or whatever you want to call it, and back to your mask, and go forward another second or so. And this is where it's going to morph. So grab your mask, you know, the path, and we're going to move the points around. So go back to your freehand tool, and you're literally going to pick up the points and just move them around. So let's start with that one there. Almost there now. And last point. There, brilliant. Okay, that will do for now. So if you look at this now, let's just uh, turn Dean's photo off for a minute. And uh, we've got that mask, which is working great. So we can now duplicate that mask. So duplicate. And turn it to a subtract. And the expansion to minus four again. So get our nice uh, outline there. And if you look at it, it's going to go, it beeps on, it goes forward, it brings the, it brings the scan down to the, the actual scanner, and then it morphs into what we want it to be, which in this case, it's Dean the Viking. Uh, great. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to fade this actual photograph in and fade out the scan line. So go forward to where it starts to scan, right to the end of the main scan, and put the opac put an opacity uh, keyframe in here. So start at zero, and then whack it up to about, I don't know, about, about 80, 70, 80 percent, let's try 70. Because uh, we can always play around with that again afterwards. So he's going to fade in there. We're going to apply a, a tint to that in a minute. And then your Dean layer is going to fade out. So put a keyframe on the opacity there and fade it to zero. And uh, what will that, what that does then is you'll see it comes in, goes over. Okay, there's a, don't know what's doing there. I think that, no, it should be over there. There we go. Goes over, morphs into the right shape. The photo comes in, the outline goes out and we're left with the scan that we are looking for, which is exactly what's going on, which is good. Um, finally, for this photograph, you want to add the um, that hue colorize again. So let's go to hue, colorize, drop it on the photograph. And I think we just put the same, so it's a three, five, five, we whack this saturation up again, and the lightness was down a tad. It's a bit too saturated, to know, about 40, yeah, something like that, uh, which which works great. Now, what you can do on you know on on this whole this whole thing when when you're doing the scan bit, the, the horizontal and the vertical scan lines, you can come back and scan the object you, know, you can play around with that and make you know really go to town with that and make it you know you make it your own really you know, make it really good uh we're almost there now thanks for staying with me if you are still there so switch everything back on so we've got the target back on uh the visual grid and the bloom there we go the nice uh glow on that there now we want to take everything uh that it's going to go on the computer screen, so that's the text, the scan round people, Dean, the truck, 
the target and we're going to cut all of those and we're going to dump them inside the scanner now paste so they're all inside the scanner now so if we go back to the terminator vision they should all now have the same uh, effect as as these controls here and the scanner and everything so it all works all looks the same um, every, everything's got the same kind of glow on it as 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 you know as the uh, scanner originally had now the very very last thing to do is the startup sequence so we're going to go um, new composite shot and we're going to call this one final shot make this about oh, I don't know it's about 15 seconds I think it was because it's way too big at the moment and we want to drop on our terminator vision which is what we've just been working on you want to go forward about three seconds so let's move this to three second position but that run up against it there now for this three seconds we're going to we're going to do a bit of a startup sequence but the first thing to do is um, put a keyframe for the scale on the first frame of your position here which is at the three second mark so go controls and transform a scale turn off uniform because we don't need that and you want to put this to zero and to zero there we go and go forward about a quarter of a second so about uh, about there and we want to change the scale now so it's about 100 by 3 so you can see what's happening now and then f you want to go all the way to the end of that second so another three quarters of a second so for my case it's going to go to four seconds there we go or thereabout and we're going to make it 100 by 100 like that so it's going to start up it's going to buzz in and open up like it's starting itself up now the last thing to do is so i'm happy with that we're going to go new and we're going to create a new grade layer and we're going to dump on that a flare so go to light flares put on the grade layer and we've got some great stuff going on here and we want to choose the, there's one of it in here called laser dot which is uh, works really well with what I'm you know what we're doing here and you want to move the position right to the center so let's put that right in the middle like that uh, the scale that's about right and right now we're, go we're going to keyframe the intensity so we want to go back three key fr um, go back three frames one two three and I go to your intensity and set it to zero now we're going to go forward three frames one two three and we're going to set the intensity to about 1.45 now we're going to go forward um, another uh, four one, two, three, four. and we're going to whack the intensity up to about two so it's getting a bit brighter and go forward another uh, another two three four five six ish a bit more keyframe again and then finally go forward another six one two three four five six and zero it out so we get a nice kind of glow as it starts up it whacks in comes on screen opens up and it fades out and then we're off now the first uh, you might be thinking what what about this bit at the beginning yeah we've got this black area here and what you could use this for is things like um, you can put some text effects on here so if we can go text and we call what we can say um, system startup And put that in the corner there 
Let's duplicate that. Move it down a bit. Duplicate that. Move it down a bit. Like that. So system startup is the first one. The second one we'll call it audio initialize. And then the last one we can call this one visual display initialize and move these um, so it starts with the system startup so system startup something like that so system startup audio initialize visual display and wham it all kicks in we can drop the opacity down on these final ones. We are almost there. Uh, I don't know, to about 60 maybe, 70. Yeah, about 70. Transform opacity to about 70. Transform opacity to about 70. And there we have it. And let's create a keyframe for the opacity on each of these and you can fade them out over a little bit of time. Let's just copy these opacity ones here. And then they all fade out together, ready rock and roll so that is the terminator vision now you know it the the text effects is a, a quite you know they, they're quite limited here so if josh or simon or any of the fx home fx home guys are listening what would be really really cool would be some cool text animation effects because that would really help with this kind of thing uh, i'm talking about like type on and random text generator or anything like that so you know it's got like a typewriter effect so you can have the, the letters going on one by one but i think uh, Sketchbook TV viewers will all agree HitFilm is an awesome and ever-expanding product. Keep going, guys. It's going to be a great 2012. Uh, I know it's going to be a brilliant year. Huge. So there we go. That is the Terminator HUD vision in HitFilm. So that is it. If you've got any questions or want to see anything recreated, please let us know on the comment section below or on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. Now, I'm Justin Heesman for How Did They Do That on Sketchwork TV. Take care. Goodbye. Sketchwork.